man, these old Berkeley paperbacks. There is not another paperback or hardcover or anything that smells like they do. Ah, smells like childhood. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another retro book review. Today we're talking about Night Chills by Dean Koontz, which is the second book that I read um, in when I, me and my friend D. Lee first started our Dean Koontz re-readathon. Um, actually, I think a lot of them were first reads for her, but they're all rereads for me. I've read everything up until the Jane Hawk series. Actually, I didn't finish Ashley Bell either. But uh, Night Chills is uh, one of those middling Koontz books that uh, it was, it's a fun ride. Um, if, if you like a certain type of story, it's not something that I ever suggest rereading because it certainly doesn't hold up. I do recall that um, I misremembered the second half of the book. Uh, I know the book is about subliminal messaging, and I thought for some odd reason that it went a certain way, and I'll discuss that in the spoiler section after the outro. Um, I thought it went, went in a certain direction, and it didn't. I remember that very clearly about the read-through. Um, another thing is, I mentioned in my review, I always go back and I reread my reviews uh, to see what sparks, you know, memories, uh, and one of the things that I mentioned, which I thought it was a rather astute observation, which is uh, Stephen King, not Stephen King, sorry, Dean Koontz, Freudian slip, some people will say. Uh, Dean Koontz is kind of like a stand-up comedian. Uh, they have the same shtick, they, they'll have one routine that they go from city to city um, with slight variations on that theme. Well, most stand-up comedians, some of them just go off the top of their head. Um, but with... And, and and then you know every single city they'll have new audiences so they can do the same jokes over and over again and it will feel new. That's what I feel Dean Koontz has been doing since roughly about 1990. Um, he's been telling the same jokes over and over again and newer fans and newer readers to Dean Koontz is like, yeah, this is a great joke, ha ha ha, very very funny. And I can understand that. Um, that's why I don't get too upset when people are like, well, his his new books are good. Well, I understand, but they're also just rehashes of his old stuff. Um, this one, especially where there's a <laughs> there's a town beset by some government evil. There's a bunch of books like that in this in the Dean Koontz universe, and we'll get to them eventually as we go on. Uh, but this one, like I said, it's very mid middle of the road. Um, in fact, I would say that it's it's more Richard Lehman than it is a Dean Koontz book. Um, it's very rapey. Uh, there's a buttload of rape in the book. Uh, very uncomfortable scenes, very detailed rape scenes, so if that puts you off, definitely stay away from this one. Um, Koontz has completely abandoned that, uh, that topic uh, later in his career. He might allude to it, but he doesn't go into the kind of detail that he goes into here. Um, another aspect of this book is, again, it's another government conspiracy kind of deal. Uh, the, the government's bad. Uh, Dean Koontz, I don't know if Dean Koontz himself is a conspiracy theorist, but if, if you've been reading his stuff for long enough, he does certainly feel like a conspiracy nut. Um, I know he's, uh, he... I know I, I don't know that he's conservative. I do know that he uh, he believes that everybody should be prepared, everybody should own a gun, that kind of thing. He's of that mindset. Um, now, the the problems with this book are I I think the pacing. I don't think that I don't. This is one of the few Koontz books that I feel has a problem with pacing. It takes so long for the book to get going, over 200 pages, and in those first 200 pages, you got the rapiness, um, and if that, like I said, if that kind of thing isn't your cup of tea, it's not my cup of tea, um, if that's not your kind of cup, you know, not your thing, you're not going to enjoy this there at the beginning, and pretty much everything else I have to say about the book is, uh, is a spoiler, so I'm trying to think of anything else I might have. I don't think there is anything else, except for the fact that um, there's that it, this has the, pretty much the same issue as every other King, King Koontz book, as well, in that it has a terrific premise, but it has forgettable characters, and it 
this one uh, takes too long getting going. But I think that's all I'm, I have to say about this one. If you want to, you can read my thoughts in my review on Goodreads. I'll link to that down in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another retro book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye! Let's see if I can get through this without the doggos barking. I can. I heard him barking through the uh, through the in, through the outro. Uh, that's my doggo Ash. Um, anywho, so yeah, Dean Koontz. The, the spoilers, like the rape scene in the kitchen, uh, it, it bothered the hell out of me. And I suppose that's a good thing. It's supposed to bother me, but it, it bothered me on a level that was like this is unneeded. We don't have to go into all that. Um, I remember that specifically. I remember the, the, the second half of the book uh, being nothing like I expected it to be. The first time I read this, for, for some odd reason, I remember, you know, the, the subliminal messages in the water, whatever the hell happens. Um, I remember that... Spoilers! Spoilers! <laughs> By the way, uh, spoilers after the outro, folks, if you're new to the channel. Um, I remember... I, I seem to remember that at the after about 200 pages into the book... The, the whole town goes batshit crazy, and they just start murdering everybody, and only a, a, a few people uh, survive it, kind of deal. Almost like, uh, Phant well, Phantom is everybody's, well, I don't want to spoil that one, but anyways, that's that's how I remember it, you know, um, and it's not how it went, and when I was saying, there's several books like this, you have Phantoms, you have Midnight, um, I know there's others too, but those are the three that come to mind, Night Chills, Phantoms, and Midnight are all about the same, about the small town kind of shenanigans, but, uh, and they all have to deal with the government in some kind of way, I believe, Midnight maybe not, but, uh, I believe it has to do with the government, but, uh, I mean, seven times out of ten, it's government, you know, um, for, for Dean Koontz. Um, let's see here. This, uh, there's another, uh, I, I think the whole thing just kind of fizzled out. I remember reading that in my review. The ending kind of fizzles out, and I don't remember much of it at all. Maybe there's a scene where, um, the agents are chasing the hero up uh, a log shoot or some shit like that, like a conveyor belt. I don't remember. That's what I seem to remember here. Um, once again, it's a Dean Koontz book, so you have no memorable characters. The plot is kind of runs together with everything. It's definitely a three star book. Um, if you don't mind the rapiness, definitely check it out. But th that's pretty much all I got to say. At least it's not a negative re review this time, so I can keep all the, ah, what are you doing, Dan Koontz is the next coming of Christ. I can keep all that shit out of the comments, at least.